everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Fiona at Drawings in the Drawer and on here we discuss everything watercolour. So if that is something that might interest you, click that notification bell, like, subscribe, all the things and stick around because I'm uploading a video every Sunday. Okay, with that out of the way, let me talk about what I'm going to discuss today. Added elements. You've seen a selection of my paintings here where I have added elements. It can be a bit of everything and it can be realistic or it can be more geometric and abstract but the fact is that adding extra elements to your pieces gives them interest, it gives them a meaning, it tells a story and it allows you to tap into your creative self Find an outlet that will probably leave you feeling lighter and more expressed, if that's even a word or a term, than just painting a reference image as it is and trying to get the likeness. Looking over some of these old paintings, and some of them are not that old indeed, they're tutorials over on Patreon, and you have until 10 hours after this video has gone up to join my Cadmium Red Light tier, which is where all my tutorials are, for only $5. I've extended this offer for another 10 hours after this video has been uploaded. You have the offer to join that Cadmium Red Light tier at $5, after which it's going up to 7 and if you're already in it, you will not be affected, but otherwise you won't be able to get in it at $5 again if you leave. So take the opportunity now, but let's go on talking about added elements. So all my favourite paintings have added elements to them, be it a flower, a bird, a feather, a bee, some other kind of insect, and sometimes even something like a paper plane, a paper airplane, can symbolise so much. Finding things that mean something, that symbolise something. And looking over these more recent pieces and the older pieces as well, I just thought of how much fun it is to actually practice painting the added elements, which is something that I don't do too often, but I find that it's really useful not only to step out of your comfort zone, but also because it's easier when we're used to painting portraits, it's easier to approach subjects like animals, which can be broken down into geometric shapes more easily. And we are very often surprised with the result we get when we paint something that we have never painted before, especially if we're coming for portraits, because we won't be so fussy about details and things like that. I was looking at the piece uh, in my sketchbook where the girl is surrounded by mushrooms and it reminded me so much of a fairy tale that I thought I wanted to get some practice with painting mushrooms. They are such fun to paint and there's such a variety of mushrooms out there that you really have so much choice when it comes to reference images. The viewer doesn't necessarily need to know the meaning of the symbol that you're adding. It can be something to yourself or something that you want to put in there just because it symbolises the time of your life that you're going through, change or something positive or just something that you want to get out there but you don't want to openly tell others about. But symbols can also be used to commemorate someone or to represent someone. If you're painting someone that you love or someone that you admire, adding something in there that is just a little bit of a secret or just a little bit of a tribute to who they are definitely gives your painting that extra depth and that extra meaning.
Mushrooms, for example, represent spiritual growth. They represent rebirth, enlightenment. They represent the cycle of life and its ability to emerge from darkness and decay. And the nature of life, that is a cycle with birth, death, transformation. And I think that's a lot for one thing to represent. For me, a painting is more complete when it is able to tell a story as well as just to look beautiful on a wall or in your sketchbook. And then I went in and penciled in these faces behind the mushrooms. I think my love for art started from fairy tale books and looking through them so often, time and time again, when I was a child and when I was growing up. It was a world of magic. So in a way, I think mushrooms featured heavily in that kind of illustration. I remember looking through the books and being in absolute awe of the magic and wonder and mystery that these spreads emanated and the storytelling of course just made everything deeper and you could change your interpretation of it every time you looked at it. I really had a lot of fun painting these faces in the background. It really felt loose. And I fell in love with the one to the lower right hand side, the one behind the three mushrooms. I just think the way the blues and the reds mixed in the skin around the eye area. And then the contrast I went in to the iris was just perfect. It wasn't too detailed. It was just beautifully blended. And when I added the highlight at the end, it just seemed like a reflection on a misty lake surface. I loved it and I hope that I will be able to replicate it in a larger piece. And I painted these lips a while back and I've been meaning to show you the footage for some time now. I am so happy with how they came out. And not only I can tie in the theme of symbolisms because you can see that in one of the lips I have birds sitting on the lower lip and one like flying up to it almost like one's in the nest. And then you will see me add other elements to the lips that I'm painting now in the video. But the interesting thing is that when I got to lip number four, I noticed that the last two lips I painted were indeed the most expressive, the ones that I think I developed a new technique in when painting. I used the paint almost thicker, but still watery enough so that it still blended and mixed on its own on the paper. And that is something that I absolutely loved and I love the way it turned out. So stay tuned to watch the footage. And here you can see one of my beloved paper planes flying into her lips or into these lips. And I'm not sure what that represents, but I used it in another painting where I know what it represents, but I'm not going to say that because in this case, it's not something that I wanted anybody else to know.
And this is all from me for this week. See you next Sunday. Keep painting. Bye for now. <laughs>